Highway Patrol. Yeah, um, I think I just saw OJ Simpson on the uh, 5 freeway. He's heading north. And we like looked at him, you know? Uh -huh. And he like stared us down like he was dead. <laughs> Hold on, I got a cop coming here right now. Okay, we'll put it out. Okay, bye. These two young people didn't deserve to die, and they didn't deserve to die in that manner. I can take a few questions. Commander Gascon, didn't you have a tail on the suspect all the time? Were you watching him constantly? True. Well, you, you asked the question. Would you like for me to answer? As Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman lay dead in the entryway of Nicole's Bundy condo, Nicole's ex-husband, O.J. Simpson, boarded a red-eye flight to Chicago, where he was set to play in a charity golf tournament the next day. Did you fly on the evening of June 12th, 1994? Yes, sir, I did. When you first encountered Mr. Simpson, what, if anything, did you observe that he was doing? Just looking out the window, just lost in thought. How long did your conversation last with Mr. Simpson? A minute Simpson? or so. He had seemed uh, like the old O.J. that I always see here and there. And the fact that he was so late on, on board, I was looking to see if he was sweating. Um, and he looked absolutely normal. Uh, his... Simpson checked into the O'Hare Plaza Hotel, which is now a Holiday Inn. The football star was friendly with the night clerk, even joking around before mentioning that he was tired and needed sleep. Back in L.A., police officers, along with Detective Mark Furman, went over to Simpson's house to inform him of his ex-wife's death. It's LAPD policy to immediately inform the next of kin when a celebrity is involved. When they arrived, they discovered a trail of blood leading from Simpson's white Bronco to the front door, as well as a bloody glove matching the one found at the crime scene. Sleep, however, was short-lived for Simpson. Detective Ronald Phillips called Simpson in his Chicago hotel room, breaking the news that his ex-wife had been killed. Chicago O'Hare Plaza. O.J. Simpson, please. One moment. Uh, hello? Is this O.J. Simpson? Yeah, I have some bad news. Your ex-wife, Nicole Simpson, has been killed. Oh my God. Nicole has been killed? Oh my God, is she, is she dead? Yes. I'm so sorry, Mr. Simpson. What is it? He didn't ask how she died. Simpson didn't ask how she was killed, when she was killed, or who killed her. Where and when? What? I didn't know. He didn't even ask where she was killed. Questions you'd think you'd ask if the mother of your children was murdered while she was with your children. The discovery of the body set in motion the most famous car chase of all time and a televised trial that riveted a nation and divided us along racial lines. This is Dead in Hollywood. Let's go behind the sign. I brought something really kind of happened that night that started my downfall as I think about it, but I, I, I prefer not to talk about it here. What happened? Not right now. I, I really don't want to talk about it here. I really don't. Okay. No. Checking out of the O'Hare Plaza Hotel, Simpson made a big deal about needing a Band-Aid for his bloody finger. He'd been so stunned by the news of his ex-wife being murdered, he broke a glass in his hotel room, cutting his finger in the process. I didn't really throw a glass. I just was, you know, you, 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 and when I was putting it down, I just, it just smashed. <laughs> you, 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 you know. Simpson was rude and overbearing at the front desk, but on the flight back to LA, the Football Hall of Famer was a consummate celebrity, even signing a cocktail napkin for a fan. His seatmate, Mark Partridge, made an unfortunate remark to Simpson when the sports star sat down next to him. It seemed that Mr. Simpson was visibly upset about something. Early in the flight, I said something to him like, tough way to start a Monday. And at that point, he said, a friend was dead. During that conversation, he told me it was his ex-wife. He said he loved her. He said he was in shock. He didn't know what to think. He said family or friends were blaming him. I asked if it was an accident. He said no. The news that Simpson was at the center of a sordid tragedy snuck up on the public quietly, but then exploded quickly. Everyone had an opinion and no one could turn away. It was hard to believe that. It, it seemed so easy listening to TV that week that it was that easy for people to believe that I could, I could kill two people. I've never personally shaken hands with a murderer. I thought that my whole life would meant something. When Simpson arrived back at Rockingham, he was briefly handcuffed before being taken to the Parker Center, police headquarters in downtown LA. 
Nicknamed the Glass House, the Parker Center was demolished in 2019. The building was perhaps best known as the backdrop for the TV show Dragnet. I carry a badge. Simpson was questioned for three and a half hours. Interview room in Parker Center. The date is June the 13th, 1994. And we're here with O.J. Simpson. What do you think happened? I, I have no idea what happened. I don't know how, why, or what. You guys haven't told me anything. You haven't had any problems with it lately, have you? Okay. How is there problems with it? David, I told you before he wasn't going to say anything. I know you got to ask the question, but give us a break here. 30 miles away in suburban Agora, California, family and friends also gathered today at funeral services for Goldman, a 25 year old waiter and model. I thought it was over here. Ronald Lyle Goldman. You found him? 1968 to 1994. Oh, here it is. I was here one time and there was a note on the grave. Uh, it looked like it was from Kim Goldman. Uh, it said, uh, you know, I miss you every day. Nicole and Ron were buried in separate funerals on June 16th. Ron was buried here at Pierce Brothers Valley Oaks Memorial Park in Westlake Village. The cemetery is only a couple of miles from the site where basketball great Kobe Bryant died when his helicopter crashed into a hillside on January 26, 2020. When Simpson attended Nicole's funeral, he was already a suspect. He arrived hand in hand with his and Nicole's children, six-year-old Justin and nine-year-old Sydney. Nicole's funeral was held here at St. Martin's of Tours in Brentwood. Allegedly, OJ leaned over Nicole's body and kissed her on the forehead and said, I'm so sorry, Nicole. Hey, let's get right to it. Our top story at 4 o'clock, funeral services for the victims of a double murder. Both ceremonies were emotional farewells this afternoon. Others hugged outside the church, embraced. Again, Simpson friend Al Cowling seemingly in charge. OJ himself with dark sunglasses on, again with his children. He spoke briefly to the priest. Moments later, with presidential-like security guards jogging by the side of his limo, the funeral procession sped off to the cemetery. The procession snaked its way down the 405 to Lake Forest in Orange County, the same freeway Simpson would take the next day during the Bronco chase. In October of 2022, I took the O.J. Simpson tour with O.J. expert and tour guide Adam Papagain. He drove me around to all the famous O.J. locations in a white freaking Bronco. How cool is that? We passed by Mezzaluna, where Nicole ate her last meal, Ron's apartment, which is like only two blocks from Mezzaluna, where he was a waiter, OJ's Rockingham estate, where the bloody glove was found, and of course, the crime scene, Nicole's Bundy condo. I called Adam up last week for some insight on Nicole's funeral. We decided to head down to Nicole's graveside for the afternoon. It's about an hour, hour and a half drive from LA. On our way down, we pulled over and picked some flowers for Nicole. I'd never been there, and I was curious to see where one of the world's most famous murder victims was buried. Uh, or you know what, it's over here near this building. It's, okay. I believe it's behind this thing right, right there. And then the third time I tried to come here was during the pandemic, while I was watching uh, Real Housewives Orange County. Okay. Like we're not too far from Coto de Casa and like where a lot of them live was down here. Yeah, anyway, I tried to go and it was closed, but it's kind of funny that like, you know, they say like, it's like OJ trial, first reality show, whatever. I think Nicole would have been a great housewife For sure. on Real Housewives of OC. She probably would have been. She probably would have been. She would have been a great, right. I met OJ when I was 18. Right. Like you could just imagine the whole right. thing. And it's sort of ironic that she ended up here in this like right. fake environment where they all live anyway. She, the, her fate was kind of always going to be this. Right. It's this person wow. people talk about and speculate about. It's a prettier cemetery than I thought it was gonna be from the photos. It looked kind of run down. The hell's cool buried here? Oh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, she's, that's the only person they have listed on here. Here we are. Ah. Sorry, Nicole. I mean, one of the most famous murder victims of all time. Yeah. But then you go, there's all these other people here, like, there are probably other people in the cemetery who were murdered by their husbands. Right, right. Like, it's really not that uncommon. Nope. Happens all the time. Yeah. Watch 48 Hours. Yeah. Oh, and I do. It's always yeah. one spouse kills the right. other one. 
Now here's a rundown of what is transpiring legally. On June 17th, the day after Ron and Nicole's funerals, detectives charged Simpson with two counts of first degree murder with special circumstances. Prosecutors announced they might even seek the death penalty, which must have freaked Simpson out. In this case, again, upon conviction, the death penalty could be used. Simpson's lawyer, Robert Shapiro, who had been Eric Menendez's lawyer for a short time, was notified by the LAPD that Simpson would have to turn himself in later that day. There was some type of arrangement with defense counsel that the police had trusted defense counsel to surround, surrender Mr. Simpson, and that has not happened. And not only is this an embarrassment for the police, but right now they've tried so hard to be careful in their investigation, and they're missing the most important thing, the defendant. I arranged the surrender of Eric Menendez from Israel on a similar basis. We are all shocked by this sudden turn of events. On the morning of the chase, OJ hid out at his friend Robert Kardashian's house here in Encino. Now I would like to introduce to you Mr. Robert Kardashian, who is one of Mr. Simpson's closest and dearest friends. Robert Kardashian lived here with his new wife after he left Kris Jenner. And, you know, Kim and Chloe and uh, Courtney. This is where they stayed. I mean, they were right, the Kardashian family, they were right in the middle of the whole OJ fiasco. OJ was Uncle OJ to us. Nicole was Aunt Nicole. Years after his death, Kardashian was accused of removing evidence from Rockingham. How close were Kardashian and Simpson? Look at this video taken the day after Simpson's wife, Nicole, and her friend were found stabbed to death. It shows Kardashian carrying Simpson's expensive Louis Vuitton garment bag. He puts it in his car and drives away. Now, Kim Kardashian is shedding light on the mystery. In an interview in the new GQ magazine, Kim says she actually saw the contents of the bag. I remember I went through it. The news was like, where is this Louis Vuitton bag? And I'm like, oh, it's upstairs. So what does she say she found? Just toiletries and clothes and golf clothes, just random stuff. I'm pretty sure it's still in probably in my dad's storage. Years later, Shapiro cast doubt on his friend's innocence. I asked you if you yourself doubt O.J. Simpson's innocence. I have doubts. The police delayed Simpson's surrender until noon to allow him to be seen by a mental health specialist as he was showing signs of suicidal depression. He had updated his will, called his mother and children, and written three sealed letters. One to his children, one to his mother, and one to the public. More than a thousand reporters waited for Simpson's perp walk at the police station, but he never arrived. And O.J. Simpson will be brought here to Parker Center. Sometime later in the morning, I got a call from the commander of Los Angeles Police Department saying we must now announce that O.J. Simpson is a fugitive. Where is he? I gave him the address and directions to the home in the San Fernando Valley. He said he would be sending up a black and white unit immediately. The police arrived about 15 minutes later, came into the home. It was at that time that we discovered for the first time that O.J. was not present. Before the police could arrive, O.J. left in his white Bronco with his friend and former teammate Al Cowlings. Mr. Simpson has not appeared. The Los Angeles Police Department right now is actively searching for Mr. Simpson. Thank you very much and we appreciate your patience. That's Commander David Gascon from the Los Angeles Police Department with one of the most stunning announcements you're ever going to hear on live television. O.J. Simpson, one of this country's best-known personalities, is a suspect in a double homicide, a terribly gruesome crime, and he is at large tonight. There is now a statewide manhunt underway for O.J. Simpson in California. Shoot of Mr. Simpson, who they hope he says to have in custody soon, but as of the moment, he is a wanted murder suspect. Police can't find him at this hour. The former football... Simpson is not inside. Despite what people running around saying, O.J. Simpson is not here. So the question so many people are asking, and perhaps this needs to be addressed to the LAPD, and it already has, is how can this possibly happen? The entire world is focused on this man. Is there any way to answer that? I can't. Shapiro stepped aside so that Kardashian could read what is now known as the suicide letter, live on TV and in front of the world's press. Everyone understand I had nothing to do with Nicole's murder. I loved her, always have, and always will. If we had a problem, it's because I love her. I loved her so much. I think of my life and feel I've done most 
of the right things. So why do I end up like this? I can't go on. No matter what the outcome, people will look and point. Please think of the real OJ and not this lost person. Simpson signed the letter with a smiley face using the O in OJ. Who signs a suicide letter with a smiley face? I was in so much pain, I just wanted it to stop. I didn't think I could bear it. And I kept saying, I can't be locked in a cell right now. Simpson was nowhere to be found. The most watched man in the world had vanished right before our very eyes. Simpson had snuck out of Kardashian's home with the help of Cowlings, his most trusted friend. The former teammates disappeared into the hills of Encino before joining the 405, where they would be one car out of thousands. It's assumed by many that it was Simpson's white Bronco that captivated the nation that day. But at the time of the chase, Simpson's Bronco had been impounded by the LAPD. It was Cowling's 1993 white Bronco. He worshiped Simpson so much, he bought the identical car. Years after the whole Simpson saga, Simpson pretended to sell Broncos in a long forgotten hidden camera show. Well, it's a terrible car, man. It's a Bronco. A car that I personally made famous. <laughs> Al Cowlings was driving this thing. If we wanted to get away, it was easy to get away. I can guarantee you, the car has escapability. I mean, if you ever get into some trouble, you gotta get away. If I went to a used car lot and I saw O.J. Simpson working there, I'd not buy a car. I actually sold the worst used car ever. I mean, this was a Bronco with a bullet hole in it and seats with holes in it. Watch this. You see that truck right there? That's one that Chevrolet? Yeah, there's what a about? camera in that truck. Oh, okay. You see right there? You've just been juiced. Are you serious? <laughs> Howling's Bronco collected dust in parking space 144 for 17 years in the nondescript parking garage of the Westward condos in LA. Eventually, the Bronco found its way to the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas before finding a home with the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Pigeon Ford, Tennessee, home of Dollywood. So, if that's not Americana, I don't know what is. The country music theme park and the vehicle two former wow. athletes used to escape justice on live television. If you get up early enough, you can see them both on the same day. Pretty incredible <laughs> stuff. It's been said that after the limo JFK was shot in, the white Bronco is the second most viewed car in American history. As OJ tells it, he was in, so distraught and uh, a doctor had given him some pills and he has no memory of the funeral or anything like that, uh, which is why he wanted to come back here uh, for the car chase. This is actually uh, when OJ disappears in the, before the manhunt starts, uh, OJ and AC came down here in the white Bronco for OJ to pay his respects at Nicole's grave one last time. Apparently, OJ was gonna kill himself here or just wanted to pay his respects or whatever. He does have a gun with him and oftentimes these domestic violence things do end murder-suicide. But he also had $8,700 in cash and a passport and a disguise. So he could have been just planning on fleeing to Mexico with his best friend, AC. I'm no, just gonna don't. Nicole. That's all I'm gonna do. That's all hey, I'm trying listen. to do. Think about everybody I else, all right? I on the freeway. I can do it in a field. I want to do it at a grave. I want to do it at my house. The question remains to this day. Did Simpson really plan on killing himself? Or was it a ploy for public sympathy? When Simpson and Cowlings pulled up to the cemetery, they found a squad car stationed at the front gate. So they drove on. The chase kind of started here. And we're not too far from the El Toro Y, uh, the, which is the 5405 interchange. That's where the chase officially started. 911, what are you reporting? This is, this is AC. I have OJ in the car. Right now, we are, we are OK. He's still alive, but he's got a gun to his head. At first, there's only one news helicopter covering the story. But by the end of the chase, 21 news helicopters, 95 million people watch it live around the world. It becomes this international news event. And if you have to point to one factor of why this became such a big story, it's the car chase. That is the greatest television premiere of all time. Everyone's watching the NBA playoffs. The series was tied up two games apiece heading into the contest. It gets interrupted with this unprecedented event, sets the tone for the whole trial, and even foreshadows OJ getting away with it all in the end. It's a very serious a very serious situation here, and I can tell you one that is hard to believe with my own eyes. When live footage of the chase swept America's TV screens that June of 94, my mom was cooking dinner in the kitchen of our family home in Arlington, Texas, and I was set in front of the TV in the living room. I'd never seen anything like it, and neither had anyone else. 
Reuters is reporting that the police tracked O.J. Simpson through his cellular phone. Now we're just now crossing the 605. And again, O.J. appears to be holding a gun to his head. O.J. Simpson is in this vehicle. One report says he has a gun pointed to his head, says he will not be taken alive, and wants to be taken to see his mother. Detective Tom Lang reached Simpson on his cell phone and tried to convince him to get rid of his gun. Don't do this. All I did was love Nicole. All I did was love her. Just throw it out the window. Uh, and nobody's going to get hurt. I'm the only one that deserves. No, you don't deserve I'm that. Get hurt. You do not deserve to get hurt. I'll call you back in a minute, sweetheart. I'm doing an interview. So this is basically where OJ was sitting during the low speed chase. One of the biggest live news events in television history was unfolding before my 14-year-old eyes and I sat mesmerized, trying to process the fact that this wasn't a movie, it was real life. Somewhere, just a 24-hour drive away, was a city where the lines between movies and real life blurred. And not just the warm and beautiful, but the cold and tragic. But look at the people standing on the freeway there. A number of people standing on the side of the road, it, just uh, the curious and also well-wishers. We watch people wave and uh, blow kisses as Mr. Simpson drives by. It's about all the goodwill I get around here. Well, just give yourself up, man. Just stop. Please stop. In Jesus' name, just stop, man. It appears now as though he is getting... As I recall, there are two lanes on the on uh, the Sunset Boulevard off-ramp. He is in one of them, and that's the lane he would be using. He is, looks like he's getting off there. Okay, Hal, it looks like uh, he is getting off at the uh, off-ramp at Sunset. All right, Gary. okay. Uh, getting off, he's on the off-ramp now, coming up, uh, coming up the off-ramp uh, at Sunset. Lots of uh, people at the uh, overpass at Sunset and uh, making, uh, making a left turn. The, the intersection's uh, free and he's clear and now making his he, left turn he, uh, westbound on Sunset. All right, uh, staying ahead of it, we're going to his mansion, believing that he's going there, but he, it was an amazing situation on that overpass there. There were people running around on top of there. I don't know how he's gonna be able to drive through all those people. All along Sunset Boulevard, there are people stopped as well ahead of the chase. We are witnessing tonight a modern tragedy and drama of Shakespearean proportion being played out live on television. Coming or going on a business trip, you've got no time to waste. I'm Tom Brokaw in New York. You're looking at a Ford Bronco and O.J. Simpson is almost back home. standoff of sorts here where the police have not been able to uh, act in any way. I thought he was... uh, we believe that to be Al Cowlings. Holding his hand up, his palm up, perhaps toward the police officers behind him, pointing toward the front door to O.J. Simpson's home. But as you can see, obviously they're uh, negotiating and talk to him, talk to him. Uh, two police officers. Two use... police officers that are in the, in the house. There. Okay, here's a, I believe a man is uh, pleading to negotiate with people here, uh, the, the police obviously, and uh, it's uh, obviously very stressful down there uh, from, from these pictures, as you can see. A very delicate situation uh, taking place as we watch here. Now, we do know that there was at least one gun in that car. The standoff at Simpson's Rockingham Estate lasted over an hour. They are trying to uh, put a phone call, perhaps, from O.J. through to his mother. They're trying to arrange that right now. Family members, some Simpson family members, obviously distraught, pushing and shoving with members of the media who were trying to cover the story. They were not allowed past the crime tape initially, but they got in a few minutes later. There's another distraught neighbor. When we last heard from Mr. Shapiro, it was at a news conference, and his opening comment was, O.J., please surrender. City News Service Wire that says that O.J. Simpson has been arrested in his driveway. Simpson waited until nightfall to emerge from the Bronco. My luck sure had changed. I was kissing concrete instead of women. 
Just two years after the riots of 92, helicopter shots of chaotic LA streets were beamed across the country once again as the nation watched anxiously, hoping to avoid a repeat of those horrific scenes we had yet to process. Authorities have repeatedly told us that he will be taken to the Los Angeles County Men's Jail. We are going to leave you now uh, with a day that uh, you have all uh, been able to share in, uh, for better or for worse. O.J. Simpson in police custody in Los Angeles, two counts of murder. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. The trial would become the latest spectacle to split the country in two. Everybody, everywhere was part of the conversation. So don't start talking all right, about who's All right, guys, the guys, guys, let's bring it back home. Let's bring TV, it back home. TV, there's lots and lots of media. The Simpson case baffled and intrigued the nation from its outset. You know, what's the message that you get a stiff fine if you kill somebody? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Opinions were formed, in some cases live on TV, and in many cases as a result of the sensationalism of live TV and its coverage of the racial tensions it was trying the to explain. The Simpson murder trial. The verdict returns in a moment. Few believed O.J. was innocent, but some who thought he was guilty hoped for his victory over the LAPD, which many viewed as a corrupt institution that preyed on minorities. They weren't wrong. Stay tuned for the final installment of Dead in Hollywood, O.J. Simpson. We take a deep dive into the trial of the century from the courthouse where it happened. Don't forget to like and subscribe so we can make that aggregator happy.